a lot of people, when they think of uh, Native American Indians, they think of the Cherokee that we used to be in this area. This was even beforehand. This is Mississippian culture that dates back to a thousand years ago. The TELUS Science Museum's latest exhibit, From Clay to Copper, has been in the works since 2010. We hope it stimulates a, a greater appreciation for the uh, uh, inhabitants of this area a thousand years ago. Also, uh, get them to become more interested in his historic sites like the Etowah Indian Mounds. The political and religious center sits just 10 miles away from the museum. The message here is how resourceful uh, they were. Museum director Jose Santa Maria says his team took three trips to the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History to select the objects now on display. Most of these objects have been in storage for over 100 years. Our intent was to bring objects uh, that uh, we could trace their mineral uh, contents so we could actually match some of the mineral resources to what the objects are made of. So it back, curves. It's very thick. It's very thick. Yeah, some of them we could definitely say this is from Floyd County, this is from Bartow County, we see it every single day. There were a few that we were really, really curious, we had no idea about, and we kind of had to hunt them down. And I think we've done a good job of trying to narrow down what region they were from. Curator Amy Gramsey says the Etowah Indians chose the Cartersville area specifically for its resources. They were using a lot of stone objects, they were using a lot of minerals that could be used for pigments. The thing that struck me most uh, uh, was the craftsmanship, the exquisite craftsmanship that it took to create a lot of these objects. Santa Maria says some materials came from as far away as the Gulf of Mexico and western Tennessee. A lot of these objects are not from around here. So how did they get here? And that's uh, uh, through a lot of trade. In all, there are 60 archaeological objects on loan that will eventually make their way back to the vaults of the Smithsonian.